All right. <clears throat> we are live. Hello, everybody. My name's Jason. Welcome to my channel. Uh, if you're new here, I share my adventures uh, learning 3D and other stuff, but um, for the most part, it's just uh, me learning 3D and sharing what I've uh, learned with you guys. So last night, if you were here, but my mutt headphones are way too loud. Um, we were working in ZBrush and we got this table going and did the bands and the the wood and then I exported everything uh, I did add some metal like uh, rivets to it but I exported them and for some reason after I exported them I, I deleted it here in ZBrush so Let's hop into Blender. And we can see where we're at here. So I got my, see that's my high poly. How's that look? Let's uh, switch matte caps. Let's go with uh, this one. Yeah, that's a little easier to see. So I exported it all and I brought it into Blender. And here you can see the uh, the rivets. And what I did was, uh, once I got the model into Blender, I separated it into the major parts. Uh, for example, I have the tabletop. And then I have a little slow because it's kind of a dense mesh the metal bands and then the two lower wooden parts and then that's the last part and I took the low poly and I split it into matching its respective matching parts. So I got this piece. I'm calling this the, the supports. Then I have the tabletop. And then I have the, the legs, so on and so forth. Uh, but before I did all that, I'm on another layer here, by the way. Before I did all that, I UV unwrapped it. Let me pop this open so you can see what I mean. Not the best packing job I've ever done, but it should suffice. Um. I UV unwrapped it uh, and I triangulated it. That's why it looks a little, little odd. And if you're wondering why I triangulated it, I do that because it helps maintain the consistency of the normals, I guess, uh, between software packages. So when I bake it in Painter and then bring it back into Cycles to render, the textures will still be represented the same way as they were in Substance Painter. Um, if you don't do that, it can sometimes get a little weird, like sometimes a Substance Painter, like see how this tabletop part has that big triangle? It'll flip that this way instead. And it's not always a big deal, but it can definitely affect your uh, the way your textures are applied or baked between the software packages. Just something to keep in mind. Um, 
So what I did was I went through and I selected each part and I separated it. Uh, excuse me, let me start over there. I duplicated it and I put it on another layer and then I separated it. And I do that because uh, the, the UV coordinates are all in the same spot. And let me uh, illustrate that so you can really see what I mean. Because this kind of confused me when I first started using uh, texture or substance painter to bake textures. Am I on the right layer? Yeah. Okay, so this is my one that's one... Uh, this is one object with multiple sub-objects in it. For example, the tabletop. That's a sub-object in this object. Um, if I select everything, you'll notice where the tabletop parts are, these two big squares. And then when you separate it up onto the other layer here, you'll notice they're still in the same spot. And that's important because you can utilize the texture as uh, one texture map instead of multiple texture maps. And this way you get a clean bake. It's kind of like you did an exploded bake without actually exploding it. And if you, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments. Okay, so we got the model all separated, ready to bake. And I've smoothed all the normals. That's something else to keep in mind too. You want to make sure you, unless you're doing like a, a hard surface model, where you have specific creases and, and edges like a gun or a robot or a mech, uh, you want to smooth all the normal. So you just select everything and then you go and you just hit smooth. I mean, if I, I don't even know what it'd look like if I hit uh, flat. Yeah, see how it looks much more uh, straight and the edges are really sharp. That's typically something you would only do for, not only, but mostly do for hard surface, uh, like mech stuff, mechs, mechanical stuff. But anyways, back to the high poly, and I can just show you, I applied some poly paint to it. And since this only has basically two parts, the wood and the metal, I only have two colors. I have the brown the wood and then I have the, the gray for the, the metal oops I didn't mean to go in edit mode I made a copy of this just so I can show you guys how to apply the vertex colors in blender if you choose to so you just Select the part you want to apply vertex colors to. And let's just go into face mode. And I have them all selected, right? For the tabletop. So you go into vertex paint. And you hit this icon here. There's a little square with a checkerboard on it called face selection masking for painting. Just click that. Then let's turn this up so we can actually see the color wheel. You select your color and hit new and add that. Now we have that color swatch to use. And then you just hit shift K and it'll fill that entire thing. And you would just repeat that process with a different color on each part. And also I have the each part uh, named accordingly. For example, this is the the bands high and I have its counterpart in the low poly model the bands low that's another important thing to keep in mind make sure your your names match up properly all right let's uh 
open this guy up launch tool bag I like to use a tool bag for my bakes I find it gets whoops a little bit better bake and I'm gonna change the sky first in here in some regards it's very similar to um tool bag or a substance painter the the process is pretty much the same uh, the thing I like about marmoset is it's you can tweak things a little little more uh, like detailed I guess but the uh, and they have this quick loader option I'll show you that you hit load you go to table I already exported the FBX files out of Blender. Um, I did that right after I got them prepped because it does take a minute. And I don't want to waste anybody's time. The the high poly, uh, if you've ever exported high high poly meshes out of Blender, it takes a while to export them as an FBX. But the nice thing about Marmoset is you can select both of them, the high and the low, and just... Uh, import them and it sets it all up for you you can see it here in the in the interface marmoset has like a uh, a maya uh, navigation style i think i think it's like mayas I, I i've never really used maya i've only tried a demo of it um but I believe it's the same navigation. So you pretty much use Alt and uh, either left mouse button, middle mouse button, or right mouse button, depending on what you want it to do. But anyway, so it builds a bake group for you, right? And it has each of your rep uh, respective mesh parts. Your high, uh, your legs high, and if you click that, it'll highlight it for you. Let me uh, see. It's the high. There's the low. And the nice thing about Marmoset is it gives you this cage that you can see. Um, Substance Painter has a cage too, but you can't see it, so it's really a uh, can be a little frustrating. If you don't nail it on the first try, like this one, you can, let me, uh, oops, uh, let me, I did a test earlier to make sure everything was working right. Table, bakes, and I'm going to, I guess that's visible. Um. Now let's get a darker sky. It's hard to see the There we go. I don't know if you can see this right here and right here and like here at the bottom of the leg. The high poly mesh is sticking out of the cage, so you just hit use this offset slider to pull it out till it encompasses the whole thing or surrounds the whole thing I like to call it like a force field this this part here is a different mesh so I don't need to worry about that and inside looks good and then I like to hide the high poly once I have the cage right and that looks good and you basically just uh, repeat that for each respective part. So we got the supports. And I don't know if I need to really do much adjusting. A little bit here, so I'll offset it a little. I'm a little more than I thought I was going to have to do it. Maybe a little bit more. 
Yeah, the nice thing about doing it this way is you don't have to worry about your meshes uh, intersecting with each other. Oops, I forgot to hide the high poly. And we'll just go to the tabletop. And this one, I don't think I even need to do anything. Oh, oh, right there. See, there's a little bit sticking out right there. And there's, there's still right here too, a little bit more. It's easy to overlook some of it if you're not double checking everything. And last but not least, we have the metal bands. These are definitely not in there. Oh, that one's still sticking out. Oops, wrong way. Oh, that one's sticking out. Damn, it's still sticking out. The very little tip of that one. I don't know if you guys can see that. Right there. Let me make sure that's... There we go. Another thing you can do is you can skew the the cage or the normals, which is super handy for like getting these to look right. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Let me a brush adjust this brush this. Whoa, that's way too big. Still too big. See how it's getting those uh, normals red? This way these spikes or these rivets will read properly. When the model is viewed from above. Let's go through and do these ones real quick. Like normally you would have to do this by hand in uh, a different program. Like you could do this in Blender by hand and pretty much any 3D package. It's just super tedious. The paint skewing is a no brainer. Yeah, anything that's kind of on like a flat surface that you really want to make sure is uh, not distorted. You just kind of skew it. Those will probably be fine because they're on a really flat surface. I'll just do this one just for the hell of it. Now these ones I probably don't need to do. But what the hell, why not? We're here, right? If it's a little loud, I have my fan on high because it's still really hot here. I do want to get these. And you just kind of click your mouse button or you can hold it and paint. Oops, I need to shrink that down a little. So 
sometimes it can take a second to catch up to undos yeah well, that should do it there we go we'll call that good and we'll play the high poly And now we'll just do a little test bake. We're not going to load any uh, settings really. Whoops, I forgot to get rid of all those default materials I had on there. Okay, so we just want to do a quick bake. So we'll hit bake. Then you hit this little P. It's like a preview and I think that looks pretty dang good it's gonna give it a look-see to make sure there's no weird uh, artifacts or anything I didn't texture or do any detailing on the bottom of the table because it's not ever going to be seen. I guess I could have, you know, because then you could have like used it to, like if I ever wanted to break the table and flip it over, but I guess I could do that after the fact. Okay, so the bake looks solid. Let's get a different uh, sky in here now. There we go. Just so we can see what's going on a little more. I'm going to make that the color. And I'm going to turn the brightness down a little. Now we'll go back to the baker. And we'll do the real bake. So let's do a 4K. And you can make it separated into multiple texture sets. Uh, sometimes you would want to do that. But I like to bake it onto one texture set, you know, that way you, you don't need to use multiple textures in your, your, whatever you're rendering it in. And we got the, the save location. And this is a super sampling, we'll go with 16. And when you want to select your maps, similar to Substance Painter, you get to pick uh, which maps you want. And for this, I want to use the vertex color for my uh, color ID map. Um, if you were doing it by material, you would use material ID. So, and I also want the thickness. And I think that's it. Yeah, they have a really good selection of maps in here. If you are want to bake them all in here so pick those vertex color curvature normals and ambient occlusion I'm gonna add cavity and let's uh, crank that up just a bit and then I think that's it Curvature do I need to should be fine. Alright, now let's bake. Bear with me, this might take a minute. It does take a little while, but uh it's still faster than substance painter in my opinion. But not by much. It's not like hugely faster. But Whenever you're baking like 4K textures with like full super sampling on it and in uh, Substance Painter definitely feels like it takes a long time.
and like uh like say you wanted to just rebake one of these after the fact all you do is uncheck the ones you don't want to bake and then you can just bake it again and it'll it'll bake just that map like say for example you only wanted to do the normals at 4k and then the rest at 2k you could totally do that you would just bake the normals first at 4k and then uncheck it after it's done and then bake the rest at 2k bake in the AO and we'll hop into uh, substance painter real quick after this to to get the um just to see what it looks like with some textures on it I should probably uh, close blender kind of save some of my free up some of my computer resources I always get a little worried whenever I and baking stuff and streaming because it can uh it's only happened once but it can crash it definitely slows down yeah the marmoset tool bag utilizes your gpu to render um sort of substance painter i believe uh, i have a gtx 1070 which is a good card. It's not like the best out there, but um, but it's it's depending on the texture size and file and how many textures you are baking. It can take a while. All right. Boom. Here we go. Everything on there. And if you want, you can kind of like. It already throws that in there. We can throw... You know what? Uh, table... It's, uh, table bakes. Table bakes curvature. Isn't it? And then we can... Uh, just for fun, we can throw the and that's just the poly paint. Well, oh, technically it's a vertex color. Armaset does a really good job at I mean you could really make simple textures quickly if you wanted to using uh poly paint from ZBrush. I'll throw a light in there just so it you can see it a little better ah. turn it into an omni light so it's a little crank the brightness up Not bad. And now when I take it back in a blender, I'll just do a mirror modifier on it. And then I'll have my whole table instead of just half. <laughs> yeah, that turned out nice. All right, let's save this guy. Let's see, we'll call this table bake. All right, now we can hop into Substance Painter real quick. Whoops, close that. I love Substance Painter, it's so fun. Okay, we'll file new. 
And uh, first thing to be aware of, I always change this back to OpenGL because that's what Blender uses. Um, I believe Unity does too. And so does Marmoset Toolbag. And that's where I want to bring this to eventually. And we'll set this uh, at 2K. We can always change it when we export it. But it's easier to work at a lower resolution. And then I want to get my... Oops, wrong one. Uh, table. I want to get my table low. Open. And I want to add those maps that I just baked from Marmoset. And those are the table bakes. Table bakes. Vertex color. It's open. And those will be put into your project. Okay, so here we are in Painter. And I'll just delete this layer. We'll go into texture settings. And now I'll just select my maps and they come up in the project. So if you just were to type project, it'll it'll bring up your maps that you imported. We got our bakes. Oh no. What's what I do? I didn't apply the same material. Okay, well I guess we can show that real quick. So we'll my bad, my bad. Something I overlooked that's, uh, as you just saw, is important if you want to get one texture map. Um, you need to apply the same material to the entire low poly. So I'm just going to remove these. New, we'll call this table mat. And I'll select all, sign. Um, Blender has an odd way of assigning materials. You have to create a new one every time. And then you go to this material globe. And then you select the one you want to apply to it. Then you assign it. It's, it's very odd. Very cumbersome. I wish you could just drag and drop them. I know in Maya and like 3D Max, I think in Moto too, you can just drag and drop them. So we want table, table mat. And then we can just make sure each one, tabletop, table mat, fans, table mat, supports, table mat. Okay, so let me export this it's FBX table low FBX. Ah, oh, see how long it's taking? That's because I forgot to check selected objects only. I hate that. I really wish they would just make that a universal thing where once you checked it and hit save user preferences, it would always be like that. You have to do it every time you open Blender. I see not responding. Now I have to go back and actually export what I want now instead of my whole file. So make sure you check that, because it can get super annoying. Okay, we'll go to File, Save. Okay. The nice thing is, is we don't have to rebake it. Let's see, Edit, Project Configuration, I think. Now let's just go to a new file. You know what I just realized? Sorry guys, I'm I'm brain farts here. Okay. That's just my my little startup's 
head lets me know how much of a noob I am. Okay. I didn't select the entire... All the meshes. There we go. See, look. It's unselected. Not going to get me this time. <clears throat> okay, let's cancel that out. So edit. Configuration. Leave everything the same. And table low. There we go. Why? Why does it have two mats? Shouldn't have that. Okay, now I'm getting frustrated. Okay. Table one blend. Oh, there it is. All right, let's try that one more time. Select the entire object. Export it as an FBX. Make sure it's selected only. Export. And I don't know if I mentioned it. If you want to do that, like say you had to edit your mesh, you just go and then you don't want to start a whole new substance file you just go to edit project configuration and you can re-import your edited mesh okay what did i just do Table low. Oh, I, I clicked that one. Table low. Okay, see now these are nothing anymore. Just all table map. Not, not even selectable. And I, my maps still work. See, if you were to do it that way, your maps would only be applied to that one object. And the thing that sucks about doing it that way is you'd have to take them all into like Photoshop or a editing program and composite them together. Curvature. I didn't make a position. It's okay, I'll just do that in here. So I still need to get a position, and I'll just do that in here. So we'll just go position. Do a 4K. And it'll just do it based off the normals. And we'll do... There we go. And there we go. There is our table. And I don't know if you guys can tell, like... Hey, welcome to the stream, man. Thanks for checking us out. Like, see how these... the rivets... They look really good from up top. They're not geometry, so, you know, as you go down, they, they just look flat. Right. Nice. Yeah, Blender's great. Um, I mean, I'm not really, like, very versed in any 3D program. I'm just kind of doing it as a self-taught thing. But 
out of all the things I've tried so far, I really enjoy Blender. I was using 3ds Max, but as soon as I found out how much it cost, I uh, <laughs> I said screw that. I'm I can't. This is mostly a hobby, so I'm not trying to spend that much money. Let's see. I got this little stylized wood material I made. Yeah, I don't know how people do it, but I guess if you're a giant studio, it's not that big of a deal. But yeah, I, I saw that because somebody mentioned that to me before. And I was like, I don't want to use something that I eventually... Uh, won't be able to use any of the stuff I sell. Not that I'm selling a bunch of content, but, you know, I might want to in the future. Yeah, Blender is is pretty sweet. Let's see, let me drag this guy here. I don't know if I did these right when I made them. Massive color selection. Sometimes this, I noticed it, uh, no, it doesn't uh, apply my, my texture bakes. I, I don't know if it's the name. So weird. I don't I don't uh know why it does that. Maybe if I let me try again. Clear the mask. No. So odd. I don't know why it doesn't automate like this one did it, the wood, but I'll have to research that a little more. I'll just go through here real quick and uh Pop these in there so you guys can see position, thickness. Yeah, I've uh, been really impressed with with uh, Blender. It pretty much does anything you could ask. It might not be the absolute best, but for the price and for how versatile it is, there we go. Oh, you know what? I have. Why does that look so odd? I miss this one. Hmm. Well, I don't even think I need that one. Here we go. And there's our table. Nice little look see. Yeah, 
Okay, a flare, little vignette. Bloom. Turn that bloom down. Now I'll take a little screenshot. See, we'll just do a 1080 screenshot. And uh, end it up to 20 min. All right, save, save render. Start of this table. Whoops, let me uh, one. All right, I think I'm gonna call it a night, guys. Pretty much got what I wanted done, done. Um. Hopefully you guys found that helpful. I do have everything archived on YouTube if you want to go back and uh, see how I did something. And uh, next project is going to be uh, a little bench to sit next to this. It's probably going to look the same. I probably won't even stream that. And I'm, then I'm going to make some beer mugs that look like barrels, little barrel beer mugs. And following that, I'll be doing some uh, tiling textures, uh, some wood floors, some stone tile floors, and walls. Get this little diorama built up, start getting it put together. Um, if you guys like the stream, uh, hit the thumbs up. If you know what, and if you uh, want to get notified and see the next stream hit that subscribe and bell icon i stream about uh three to four days a week so yeah thanks for tuning in and i will see you guys tomorrow have a good night